that I want you to learn tonight is this. Define the most important things in your life. Not everything is worth dying for. Define the most important things in your life. And I will guide you. Not everything is worth dying for. Please, don't kill yourself unnecessarily. There are things that are not worth dying for. Eighth principle. Define the most important things in your life. Not everything is worth dying for. There are people who have died today. If they have the opportunity to come back, they will smack themselves at the cheek and say it was not worth it. I can tell you, everything in life does not hold equal value. You will never rise to the state of an overcomer and you would have wasted the lesson from your, your discussion with an overcomer if you do not know this. All great people, all champions in the spirit, in ministry, in organizations and in life, they know some of them have learned from their many years of pain that not everything in life is worth dying for. I have studied the subject of fulfillment myself and I have taught you a few teachings around fulfillment. I refer you to two of my teachings. One, what seekest thou? Number two, the law of seasons. But in my studying the subject of success and fulfillment, I found out at the end of my study and gleaning from the wisdom of fathers and champions indeed, that there are only three things that are worth dying for. The most important thing in your life is defined as what you can die for, not what you are living for. The most important things in your life are defined not just because you are living for them, but that you can die for them. Anything you cannot die for is not that important. Don't let it give you heart attack. There are people today carrying self-inflicted health, health concerns because they have put themselves in positions where they do not, they have not defined the most important things. Can I share with you my perspective about the three most important things in your life? Number one, your relationship with Jesus. This is the first thing that is worth dying for, not just living for. It is worth dying for. If you can only live for Jesus, you are not serious. Genuine love is demonstrated in the ability to both live and if need be, die for a cause your relationship with Jesus Mark chapter 8 35 to 37 at the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see at the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see. Give us that scripture. Mark 8, 35. For whatsoever, whosoever will save his life. Is that in your Bible? He shall lose it. But whatsoever shall lose, whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Reading to 37. For what shall it profit a man, the Bible says, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Ladies and gentlemen, your relationship with Jesus is the guarantee of your eternal destiny. It should be the most important thing in your life. It's not a preacher's manipulation. No. 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 I don't care what you have. I don't care what you do well in. If Jesus is not at the epicenter of your life, you have not defined your priorities right. Number two, what is the second thing worth dying for? Your family, both biological and spiritual. Family is worth dying for. 
when Job lost everything in his life, the only thing that was left was family. Business could not stand the test of time. Reputation could not stand the test of time. Assets, as we call them, could not stand the test of time. At the end of his life, only one woman stood by his side. And even that woman stood there in her pain. And she said, why do you hold on to your integrity? Job, you're my husband, but curse God and die. But at least she stood by him. Can I tell you? Respect those who can see all your limitations and still love you for who you are. Not everybody has that patience. If you do not respect those who have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly and still love you the way you are, you are making a big mistake. Worth dying for. Jesus and the gospel. Worth dying for. Family. Now, I know that a lot of people say all kinds of things about church and they are largely right. Oh, church is full of hypocrites. Church is full of this. But can I tell you, the safest place you can ever be spiritually is the house of God. In the midst of all of all these stories here and there, you will still find people who love you in church. You will still find those who will cry with you in church. If you think I'm joking, lose a loved one or let something happen. And that's when you will know that many people are selfish. It is in church you will find someone who does not know you, but just seeing you cry can come to you and say, what is the matter? Can I help you? Don't get used to wicked people and think everyone is wicked. In church, there are good people. There are all kinds of vessels. Vessels of clay, vessels of wood, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold. Many years ago, I made a commitment with my life that aside being a man of God, one of my greatest goal in life is to be a shoulder for as many wounded people. Beyond being a man of God, my greatest testimony is not just that I, I was or I am a great man of God, but that someone, I'm not called to solve everybody's problem, but the, the much that I can do, not little, the much that I can do, if I can use my life to wipe somebody's tears, it may not be the best, but it was not the worst. You see, we're not called to do everything. When it has to do with being there for people, you don't need ordination. You don't need education. You just need a good heart. There are things you will need qualification to do. Showing love and kindness is not one of those. Educated or otherwise, you can show love and kindness. Are we together? Wealthy or otherwise, you can show love or kindness. When it has to do with love and kindness, gender does not necessarily matter. Age may not matter. Our world is full of bleeding people, bleeding preachers. I once saw a photo, I think it was on YouTube or so, I can't remember what I was looking for. And then I saw, I think it was a, a, a graphic representation of something. And a man who was holding on to his small son, shielding the son from some, something or so. And there were all kinds of arrows on that man. I said, how true. Some of you never know what men of God go through. The stress, the pain, the internal crisis, having their own issues that they have to throw away. This is true for preachers. This is true for leaders. And most times, the church sometimes can be full of very ungrateful people. They do not know that every sermon you hear comes from a standpoint of blood, tears, and sacrifice. How about leaders? You come to your workplace and you see ideas that keep scaling that organization, not knowing that someone lost sleep for that idea to come about. I'm praying for you that you will train your spirit to respect greatness when you see it. There is no gift of greatness in the Bible. Greatness is a cumulative of this journey. And tonight we are learning lessons from an overcomer so that you will become one yourself. Three most important things. Number one, your relationship with Jesus. Number two, your biological and your spiritual family. Number three, your assignment. John chapter 4 and verse 34. 
Jesus expressed it so beautifully. 434, John. He said, my meat. The word meat there means my nourishment. Almost as though my living, my remaining is based on this. The ability to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Can I tell you? Sometimes I live a very busy schedule. By Tuesday, we're in Cote d'Ivoire. To Wednesday, we return back straight. And I'm preaching at the Four Square Convention. Thursday and Friday morning. As soon as I'm done, headed from Abelkuta back to Lagos. And then to Port Harcourt to still preach. That same night, one session with House on the Rock. And sometimes you are stretched to the borders and you keep asking why all this i can tell you the joy that comes to your heart when you know that your life is being a blessing cannot be contained with anything no amount of money will replace it no amount of fulfillment if you have not tasted this your life is not valuable enough there must be fulfillment beyond material things that you get and it comes by pouring yourself as a drink offering someday if christ tarries we'll all not be here hallelujah and like i would always say the hymn writer says thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling only to be remembered we used to sing this song in the seminary and some will even cry and then we'll go back and do exactly what the song was warning against <laughs> hallelujah your relationship with Jesus is worth dying for. Let me tell you what is not worth dying for. Fame. Money. Positions. Titles. Competitive achievements. They are not worth dying for. You will hurt yourself and pierce yourself with many sorrows and not even live to see yourself step into it. There are some people today who will not sleep. Why? because you saw a rapper that someone wore please after koinonia go and sleep i release that grace upon you are we together there are people today who will not sleep because they checked their social media or whatever and saw two likes two follows two shares and they said no this can i, I mean it can't be <clears throat> go and sleep please This person was my junior in school and is now dedicating his house. No, please go and sleep. It's only when you are awake that you can go forward. Dead men don't go forward. There is no progress to dead people. Are we together? Yeah. There are things that are not worth losing sleep about. Please, I give you a sound counsel. A lesson from an overcomer. Learn to be contented while you aspire for great things at every level contentment is not mediocrity is gratitude celebrate seasons don't hurry out of them you will miss the season you are rushing out of now rushing out of now hallelujah with all humility there are things i cannot do again by reason of this supposed public or celebrity life Sometimes I look back and I wish I had moments where I could smuggle myself, maybe to just walk around. Literally, can you imagine? Someone, if someone sees you on the street, even if you are just walking, the person will kneel down there and say, finally, I know, God, I will not let you go. They can literally hold your trouser in a junction. And you know Nigerians are people of faith. They don't care. If they tear the trouser and get their blessing to them, it's a good baguette. hallelujah I'm generally not the kind of person who likes all this um, oh you are this and I, I usually don't like it but sometimes you get to a point where you can't hide again you can't do anything and most people get beguiled by those things when you see great people you usually admire you inspire and then for many people that that inspiration from them now becomes cancerous because you lose sleep. I can't believe this. Is it not this guy that I even got filled with the Holy Ghost? 
He's the one who now has a membership of 1,000 people. And I am here with three people, four people. Please, dear man of God, do not leave sleep. The one person you are training is equivalent to a nation. A competitive spirit is cancerous. Literally, medically cancerous. It will destroy you. Anything that will not give me sleep, may God not bring it around my life. Are we together? Yes. Be content with the car you have now while trusting God for a greater one. A greater one will come, but drive the one you have with pride and don't let nobody bully you. Be content with the house you have now. Don't worry. Be content with the one cloth, the one shirt you have now. Man of God, be content with the 50 faithful members that God has given you. Serve them with all your heart. Now, let me say this before we find a place to pray. If I were that overcomer, 